Sega was running on all cylinders in the early 90s. They struck gold with the Sega Genesis and they finally had their own mascot to rival that Nintendo's Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog. After the success of Sonic & Knuckles in 1994, Sega was looking to find the next main Sonic title and that was supposed to be Sonic Extreme, but as we all know that game would be cancelled due to a massive amount of development hell with the Sega Saturn found a main Sonic game, which all but doomed a pretty good console. So in this video guys, we're going to talk about Sonic Extreme and how mismanagement and severe time crunch played into its cancellation. The mid 90s were an ambitious time for the gaming industry. With Nintendo 64 and the Sony PlayStation in development, Sega went to develop their own 3D Sonic title for the next generation. While Sonic Team was focused on making nights into dreams for the Sega Saturn, the Sega Technical Institute or STI oversaw making the next Sonic title. The game had originally started out on the 32X, an add-on for the Sega Genesis that never should have been made. But anyway, at that point it was known as Sonic Mars, with the project being led by Michael Kosaka and assisted by Chris Sin and Don Goddard. The plan was to make the first 3D polygonal video game in the series, complete with three-dimensional locales and characters from Sonic's world. It was decided early on that Sonic Mars was to be set within the framework of the Sonic the Hedgehog television series for Sat AM, which was still airing at the time. It was to include some characters from the show like Sally Acorn, Bonnie Rabot, Antoine D. Collette, Eggman Squatbots, and a new character, T.R. Bubowski. However, problems had presented themselves early on. STI had created design documents for the game without fully knowing the capabilities of the 32X. And on top of that, when Yuji Naka returned to STI from Japan, he went to their demo demonstrations and simply said, Good luck. If only they knew how true those words were. Things only got worse. Michael Kosaka left Sega in early 95 because of issues between himself and Comic Zone developer Dean Lester. Chris Sin and Don Goddard took over the project and began reworking the script of Sonic Mars. Sometime later, the Sat AM elements were dropped due to his interest from the creators, although TR would be kept, and eventually the game itself would be reworked into what would be known as Sonic Extreme. At this point, the writing was on the wall for the 32X. It was a colossal failure along with the Sega CD, although they had to give a Sonic CD, so it wasn't all bad. In short, the producers would need more power to run the game than the 32X could give them, and Sega needed to cut their losses, so SCI were told to shift the game's development to the Sega Saturn, where it went under the codename Sonic Ring Worlds. With a new direction, you would think that things would be better for STI, right? Nope, things were only going to get worse from here. You see, Sonic Extreme was set to release through the 1996 holiday season, which left the development team without much time to get to work on the next Sonic game. Don Goddard would eventually be let go, as many developers felt that he was difficult to work with. However, with new faces on the team like Ofer Awan and Christina Coffin and the experience between them, it led to renewed enthusiasm towards developing the game, for a while. It was during this time that the news of a new 3D Sonic game was being made known to the public, which really put the pressure on for these guys to deliver. The game development team would be split into two groups, with Group A being led by Chris and Ofer working on the main portion of the game, and Group B led by Christina working on the boss levels and assets. What was interesting is that each team were developing the game on different engines and tools. The main stages were being developed on the PC while the boss fights were being developed on the Saturn. This was supposed to ease the development process, but instead, it led to more problems. Oh, there were going to be some trials and tribulations in the last months of development, but in the beginning, the team got right to work and the game was looking promising. The main part of the game not only allowed Sonic to move around freely in an open 3D environment, but you could also rotate the entire screen, so you could run on the walls and even the ceiling, and that would allow you to explore hidden areas which added new aspects to the gameplay. The boss levels were open areas that would let you take on 3D enemies. In March of 96, Sega Japan sent some representatives over to Sega of America to see the current progress on the project. They were shown the first demo of the game and the executives were disappointed with the demo's performance. The demo shown to the executives showed the game only running at a few frames per second. Chris and Ophir wanted to show them a more stable version of the game, but the execs had left for it and got the chance to. On the other hand, they were impressed with how the boss engine performed and requested that all development be moved to that engine instead. Again, by this point, it was March of 96 and they had just 7 months to finish the game before the October deadline. That is one hell of a time crunch, and the team was spending 16 to 20 hours a day working on the game. In fact, many of them moved into the development studio so they could work around the clock. If that isn't dedication, I don't know what is. When Bernard Storr became the president of Sega of America, he would try to help the Sonic Street development team. The team requested that they would like to use the game engine from Nights into Dreams, as they thought that this was something they needed to finish the game. Bernie agreed and after some talks with the management team at Sega of America, the team now had the nice engine. The game would now see a new direction with this engine with this version of the game named Project Condor. However, when Yuji Naka learned that STI was using his engine, he was not too happy with this and forbade the team from using the engine, even threatening to leave the company if it didn't happen. 
so the team was back to using the original engine. If you couldn't tell by now, the development for this game was all over the place, but the show must go on. At E3 of that year, Sega showed a demo of the original build of the game along with a playable build of the boss engine, which the public was honestly impressed with. All right, now Sonic's back, but with the Saturn, and it's called... Sonic Extreme. This is the blue dude with the attitude going 3D this year. Really? Sonic hasn't had a game for two years, and this year he's on all six platforms. Now Sonic is full 3D. You see all sides of him, like nothing you've ever seen before. You know, it's killing me. Look at this. Woo! Know, look at the reflections. Look at that character. That boss character is amazing. They really did a good job with this one. This is going to be hot for the holidays. It's a must-have. So it's the first Sonic to make it on the Saturn, actually, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. It's the first Sonic for the, uh, for the Saturn. It's the first time he's 3D. At this point, the team was starting to become exhausted and burned out from working on the project. Team members were getting fired, and Chris Sin was under a lot of stress from working on the game. He had been working six since the beginning of that year. It got so bad that his doctor told him that if he continued to push himself to complete the game, he would be dead within six months. After hearing this and reevaluating the state of his well-being, Sin stepped up from the project in August of 1996. The team still had Christina Coffin working on the game, but much like Sin, Coffin was pushing herself too far and it was starting to take a toll on her. Her doctor informed her to take a few weeks off, and if she continued to push, she would die within a few months like Sim was told, so she too stepped out from the project. Losing Coffin was the final blow, and the producer of the game, Mike Wallace, informed Sega of America that the project couldn't continue on, which led to Sonic Extreme being officially cancelled for the Saturn. This failure meant the end of SDI as well, as it would close at the end of 96. Despite Sonic Extreme's cancellation, Sin and Ophir would continue to work on Sonic Extreme for the PC in hopes that Segasoft would publish it, but it never got the green light from Segasoft as they only wanted ports of existing Sega games for the PC and not entirely new games, thus they never funded the project for it to continue, which saw the end of Sega Extreme on the PC. This belief that internal politics stemming from the first demonstration played into Segasoft declining to take it on, but either way, Sonic Extreme was dead. That ends the tale of Sonic Extreme's development. Many consider the game's cancellation as the failure for the Saturn as a whole, as it accelerated the demise of Sega in the hardware market. Could Sonic Extreme have saved the Saturn? To be honest, I don't think so, but it could have prolonged the Saturn's life cycle. I wouldn't have called the Saturn a bad console, but there were issues that led to it failing. First, third-party software wasn't coming in fast enough for it, and when it was, it usually didn't look as good as the PlayStation versions, so it was outmatched on the performance front. On top of that, the Saturn was a difficult console to program for. Thirdly, Sega was already reeling from the failures of the Genesis add-ons, the Saturn fan was just the icing on the cake. When you look at the demo versions of the game, it looked like it had potential, and I think it could have been a hit with the fans at the time. Crazy enough, it wasn't the first to go through this type of thing. There were similar issues during Sonic 2's development. It's a blessing that turned out like it did. On the bright side, fans did have Sonic 3D Blast and Sonic R to play, so it was something, but there would always be that hole in the Saturn's library as it never got to have a main Sonic title. About a decade ago, Kristen and his team tried to rebuild the game under the name Project S. Unfortunately, in 2010, he announced that the project would be canceled. He even created a website dedicated to Sonic Extreme, where you could look at different facets of the game. Things like level layouts and enemy designs, and designs for hero characters. It's interesting to look at the TR designs. I think she should return in a future Sonic game. Most of the site doesn't work anymore, which is a shame. But if you guys want to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. Sonic Extreme had potential to be a decent title for the Saturn, but after reading about how the development process went, it's no wonder why the project failed. There was no clear direction for this game. Developers were elected to help each other out. Egos got in the way, and for sure the executives weren't helping things either. Everything just led to one huge mess where a holiday release was basically impossible. As you can see, Sonic's transition into the third dimension was rocky to say the least. The Sigurd would eventually get it right with Sonic Adventure two years later. But you can't help to think of what Sonic Extreme could have been, and for foreseeable future, it looks like it's gonna stay that way. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as I've always wanted to make it. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.